flight by Ray Preston. And we're continuing to explore the aerodynamic force. Now today, I want to talk about funnels and venturis. Now, a venturi is somewhat like a funnel, but it's like a two-sided funnel. You might be wondering then, why didn't I bring in two funnels? Well, the reason is, it turns out that the front half of a venturi really has very little to do with how it works. So I want you to imagine this funnel, and we're going to imagine it moving through the air, like so. And we're asking ourselves the question, what will happen to the air inside the funnel if the funnel moves through the air? Now, to see that, I prepared a little animation for you. So you can see here uh, the blue rectangle represents the air, and the red represents the funnel. Remember last time, we looked at something very much like this with a ball. And the principle at play is that no two objects can occupy the same point in space. So it was true with the ball, and it's true with the funnel, or the venturi. So the venturi is taking up that space. And if we move the venturi towards us, so we'll slide it towards us, you can see it reveals behind it a white vacuum, because it's sweeping all the air out of the way. So there's going to be a vacuum right there. Now, of course, we're assuming here that the, the funnel moves at way less than the speed of sound. So the air molecules now begin to rush in and fill that vacuum. And of course, with the big open space on the back of the funnel, air is going to come in the back and fill that vacuum very quickly, but not instantly. Now, the, the thing to ask yourself is, while the air is rushing in the back of the funnel and filling it up, what's happening to the air in the throat? In a funnel, we probably would call it a spout, but in a venturi, we call it the throat. Well, there actually has to be an equilibrium here. For every air molecule coming in the back through the wide end, there has to be one going through in the low end. The secret to realizing this is that there are trillions and trillions of air molecules moving through the throat of that venturi every second, even when the venturi is not moving. As I hold that funnel there stationary, there's probably 10 million molecules a second going through. The only thing is here, there's also 10 million molecules a second going through there. But now, as those molecules flow through the throat and into that vacuum, there's going to be a reduction in the flow back in the other direction. Is this starting to sound familiar? It's just like the same phenomenon that created the wind when we looked at that a couple of episodes ago. So basically a wind, or let's call it an airflow, is going to form inside the throat of the venturi. And that's going to reduce the density of the air as those air molecules move out. So the density is going to drop. The pressure is going to drop. We're going to get a low pressure here in the, the throat of the venturi. Now, what's going on here? I call it an amplification phenomenon. Since the number of air molecules contributed from the throat has to equal the number of air molecules out here, the pressure here in the throat is going to drop much more than the pressure out here. The pressure out here will drop, but only a very, very small amount. But proportionally, it will drop more in the throat. If that's maybe 20 times bigger than the throat, then the pressure in the throat would drop 20 times as much as the pressure behind the venturi. The small pressure drop behind the venturi, of course, is generating an aerodynamic force in, in that direction. So uh, we would find that if I tried to pull the, uh, the funnel through the air, there would be drag, an aerodynamic force resisting the motion. But that's not really what we're keying on here. But it is clearly a related phenomenon. That same drag force is creating that low pressure behind. And it's sucking air, basically, through the, the throat of the venturi, creating a very low pressure here in the throat. OK, this sounds pretty important. Probably so important we should give it a name. I don't know. I call it a multiplication uh, factor. But most scientists call it something else. They call it Bernoulli's principle. So that is what Bernoulli's principle is. It says that when air is flowing through a restricted region and reaches 
an area where it can expand into a larger region. The pressure will drop slightly in the larger region, but much more in the smaller region. Next time, we're going to see how we can apply that first to a ball and then to a wing, and then we're going to be there. We're finally going to know how an airplane flies. So now you know what Bernoulli's principle actually is. I hope to see you again next time. Until then, I'm Ray Preston, and this is Theory of Flight.